Hello, my name is Patricia McNeely. I'm an Illumin Twin Flame from Chicago, Illinois. And today I'm going to talk to you about the Equinox, which actually starts so this evening. Um, today is September 22nd, so September 22nd into the 23rd, and the new moon. So we're going to talk about a few things. There's a lot going on. First, I'd like to cover a few things for some of you. You are not crazy. Okay, first of all, thousands of people all over the planet can't be uh, crazy. We're just not crazy. There's lots of insane people doing the same things and expecting it to be different somehow. But you yourselves are not crazy. There is, however, a lot going on behind the scenes, and I hope to round out the picture for you. I hope to encourage you. Also, we are in the divine timing, and uh, I knew about a week ago, I've actually known for some uh, weeks and actually for months about some of the timing and the way of this, and yet it's needed to build up. Not everything was uh, revealed. Not everything's going to be revealed because, frankly, the universe wants to surprise you, but make it a really good surprise like when you get a gift that you didn't even know you wanted, but you were expecting very much. And so I had a couple of clues along my way. About two weeks ago, I was driving in my neighborhood, and I was actually driving behind the Google Maps car. And it was so cute. It had this, uh, like, stock with this camera that could see in all directions. And uh, after a while, I mean, I turned away. I wasn't, you know, really supposed to follow it. But it was that was, like, clue number one. Clue number two, because I kept saying, you know, I, I need to order a world map or something. I need a globe or I need something to let me know. Um, I, I need to show the positions for some of this. And this is what I found. I found actually a bouncy ball. This is a bouncy ball. And it's the world. Right at my feet on one of my morning walks. And so I... <laughs> the universe just has a great sense of humor. And that's another thing. This is not a cosmic joke. You are not the cosmic joke of the universe. So please give this up. I can feel this pinging out there from the collective. No, nobody is being made a cosmic joke of. Having the patience, the persistence, the uh, perseverance, endurance, and frankly your devotion to your twin is what is carrying the day here. If you are devoted to love, to your heart, to your twin, to kissing them again, hang in here because guess what? You're coming into not only the timing of uh, many unions, but of the brand new. This is the, the universal gears are clicking into place, and I'll tell you why. Uh, we've got to talk about the equinox, the new moon. We are transiting out of the old and into the new, and this is a vertical transit. There are entities here that are helping with this and they are what I would what I refer to as divine counterparts and by all means any of the definitions I use these are just my words they're not the official words or terminology there's some of this there's no vocabulary for what I call divine counterparts are those people who do not have uh, the same uh, separation in uh, in their union and they are actually united vertically. Their soul is ready to pull them up and out of here. Other people who are twin flames, particularly those of the Blu-ray, Illumin Twin Flames, have had some extensive, deep, heavy soul damage. And some people say, Patricia, how come you're never talking about the dark stuff? And I'll tell you why. It's because it, it's becoming a distraction. Take a look around and look at all the stuff. And, you know, turn on the news, turn on any of the stuff, or don't turn it on. Because the thing is, is that is distracting people from their own ascension. And, there, and many people are well aware that they're distracting themselves from the things that they need to do. And that's going to begin to stop. That's part of the shift out of the old and into the new. 
they will stop doing old things. Those old things will no longer bring a measure of comfort. They're not fulfilling. Your counterpart is here to be with you, and you're here to be the love and be together and be new. So that means not retreating into the old things that comfort. Any of the old things, you've pulled your heart and soul out of it. A lot of you are dangling here a few feet above the earth, holding your 5D union, saying, come on, come on, let go of that old job, let go of that situation, move across the country, move to be near me, get on a plane. And I, I want to let you know something else. Um, just, just before uh, September, there were several people I knew of, some of them were personal friends, some were clients, and those people actually got on a plane and went to the either spiritual or physical home of their twin and they went there to finish clearing out their grid and I applaud you that's wonderful that is huge because many of you helped collectively and for your especially for your individual unions to jump some timelines and um, as many of you know I do readings and I do sessions well in these sessions it's been getting where these timelines are just accelerated. You know, it, it's going from telling people, well, your union out on the energy field, out on those circling timelines, feels like a year from now, and now we're in months, and now we're in weeks. And there's a big acceleration effect here. But it's going to catch a few people by surprise, like this stuff always does. Why? Because this is not just some spiritual thing or some new age thing or a concept that gets relegated to once a week or to a meditation group. This is a 24-7 slamming in your face, body slamming, physical connection to everything and you are here to get supported by the universe. You're here to be new. A lot of you are not here to have a nervous breakdown. And so if you feel like you're having a nervous breakdown, get out into nature. Let some of it dissipate. Some of that is coming over from your twin because they're either in a position where the stuff is coming off and it's not really, um, they're not dissipating it properly or they're trying to do it in old ways that comfort. And that's not going to work, but there is going to be a shift here. So um, some of that shift is going to be happening with the equinox, where this is the great equalizer. In the summer, southern hemisphere, it is going to be winter into spring. In the northern hemisphere, where I live, it is going to be uh, summer into autumn. And so you have this effect going on, equal day, equal night. And in fact, in some of the uh, tropical zones, it's a little bit different. And it, up near the Arctic Circle and the Antarctic Circle, it's different. And that's because of the Earth's axis. Okay, so you have several things going on here. You have the rotation of the entire universe, which takes about 4 billion years. You are crossing the galactic ecliptic. So that is sort of like... Well, there's like an equator. The, the galaxy also has an equator, like a middle point. And we're, we are moving through that. The other thing is that um, the Earth itself, let me get my globe again. The Earth itself rotates on an axis. And that axis rotates once every 26,000 years. And we are at that, we're in that range here where that is uh, very, these are all very natural cosmic cycles for propelling these personal ascensions, planetary ascensions, and um, the evolution. So our personal evolution of all the parts of us, so all of your five to eight bodies You've planned for evolving this right at this point. You're right here. Now, there are groups of people that did ascend and merge 8,000 years ago and 11,000 years ago. And some of the same things that are happening now happen then. Let's start a war. Let's oppress people. Let's go backwards on marriage equality laws. You know, let's kill certain people. 
and let's terrorize other people and let's, you know, not the love in these certain gates. Now, a lot of you, like me, if you're a Blu-ray Illumin Twin Flame, have some uh, other abilities. Who you are, who your vibration is, enables you to not only be the love, but to fire the grid, to resurrect all your bodies, and also to be um, uh, grid point guardians. What, that, what does that mean? You know, like, what does that mean at the human level? Well, what that means is that some of your wishes that you put into motion, you know, they, they start to make these changes because you're the conduit. Your physical body is the conduit. And how did we become these conduits? Guess what? We have eaten things here. We've invested in ourselves, uh, not just, you know, financially. We have blood on this earth. We, our blood is made from the earth materials. We have been pierced, poked, prodded, um, died here, buried here, and we're pretty much of this earth. But a planetary ascension requires us to really be deeply embedded. Guess who has done this uh, in your union? It is the masculine energy. So the masculine energy is deeply embedded, and he's like, clicking up and out of this that's this time now so hold steady if you are the feminine counterpart in your union hold steady don't be angry don't be saying oh you know why did he do this or that you have to be like this person has been through a lot because if you look at their entire um the evolutionary process here how much time it it's been and you're actually doing a twofold thing here. You are throwing away all your old stories, all your past lives, all of the trauma with each other, all of the drama with each other. And you're getting rid of it now. And so as you come up to each other and you're going to encounter, only a twin can trigger out the rest of the stuff that needs to go. And trust me, I know. Some of you have twins that are quite good at triggering things. I get it. But when it goes, make sure it goes. Don't sit there and scratch your head and go, well, game over, game over. I, I'm out. I'm throwing in the towel. I, I just don't know what to do. No, that is when you hunker down inside and you dig a little deeper and you find out what is that core issue. Now, if you don't know... There are people out there, myself, one of them, other people that are gifted and equipped at a high level to read the multidimensional fields and help get some of this gone, uh, assisting you with some of the information so that a lot of you can do this yourself. And there's, there's a lot that um, is going on for different people. Now, I'm going to also talk about the different types of beings here to do this. You have divine counterparts, which I just described, and they're helping with this ascension, and also here to receive the brand new templating, and they're a uh, template for 5 through 12 D union. You have the blue rays, the illumined blue ray twin flames, and yes, uh, for those who have asked me several times, the Illumined the Angelic Twin Flames are the original source love twins. We are the ones capable of holding the highest vibration of light and love. And the blue is, is um, that's the ray that we wrote in on. We are blue rays. So we are the highest vibrational, highest vibrating twins. Does that make us better or for worse? I don't know. A lot of us had a lot of damage and they wish we could get out of here. My personal wish is to, yes, get to the fifth dimension. But every time I said to my guides, I said, this can't just be for a bunch of light workers. I mean, come on. I mean, this is, has to be a promise. Like, otherwise, what's the divine if it's not for everybody? And I would have at different times, I would go to different uh, things. Like, you know, one time I went to this. Uh, group thing and I'm looking around and I said where's all the African-American people I mean it this just can't be for certain groups of people and bingo I started meeting them and I knew 
I knew, I knew, I knew. I'm like, this is for everybody. It's just not for select groups of people. And you're going to see a swap about that, too. You're going to see people in the corporate world um, or in, you know, maybe they're mechanics or they are um, athletes or something like that. Some of it may be very apparent to you as you watch public events or you see people getting in trouble publicly and you might be like, ooh, that person is tripping through their stuff. They're going through their ascension symptoms. Or you may see couples that are public couples. And yes, some of those couples have public agreements. They are twin flames. But you might see them like, ooh, that one has some kidney issues. Ooh, that's twin flame thing. And you'll know. You'll know. And if you don't know, don't worry about it. But some, at the very least, some of that you can look and say, ooh, that's a really glaring public example. I don't want my union to be like that. Well, what do you do about it? And maybe you do the opposite. And not all of those people are aware. So no judgments. There's unawake people and there's awake people but the darkness is leaving and for a lot of you especially the blu-ray aluminum twin flames in order to do this and fire up your grid you are you have had the bulk of the darkness it's it's been sent out and transmuted the other types of beings there are people or what we call people but entities as high level angelics who have, yes, been to the New Earth and are going back and forth. And I've had the pleasure of meeting some of you, and I myself also have been. I have one recollection of going there. Now, a lot of this has been characterized by having a complete blackout of your dreams. You don't remember what you dreamt. And it, it just seems like you're out, like you're out cold. And you wake up, you're aware of, you know, some passing of time. You wake up and the sun's coming up. Complete blackout, though. You can't recall anything. And that's what a lot of the traveling to the New Earth, because when you do merge and go with your beloved, you will be able to pull those memories through the density. And so um, my higher self has been referring to those people as the twins of the gold ray of the golden sun. This is Earth in her um, taking on the mantle of being the new 5D central sun of the fifth dimension. So it's no longer Alcyone, it's now Gaia. And the violet rays and the silver rays. So these are the primary groups right now going through their ascent and lighting up the wave of love. Um, this is requiring a lot of people to have the emotional fortitude, the stamina, and the endurance. A lot of you have built this up in other relationships and in many other lifetimes. You're ready for this. Be the strong entity that you are. Be the strong angelic that you are. I, I'm going to tell you, you're in the tail end of this. Call on your stamina, call on your endurance. If you truly, truly, truly need a break in the action, and I'm, and I'm going to share this too. For a lot of us, there is no break in the action. This is not a flipping the switch type of thing. It's a constant, and you got to pace yourself with it. You're constantly going, you're constantly going, you're constantly going. And this is when you call on your endurance, and some of you are doing this by sheer endurance. It's the only thing that's getting you through in the devotion of your heart. And for some of you, the only thing you're able to ha hang your hat on is your belief in love. Because what you're seeing at the human level here, it's not, it's not floating your boat. And you're saying, I don't know how this is going to happen. You have to be like those little kids that expect a gift. And you have to keep testing, okay? If, if you keep pulling your twin to you keep on you know strengthening that connection because you are with them and it's going to get easier and easier and I have already had reports back from people who yes have been with their twin and or have great conversations or they they do know that they're completing large parts of their merging at night in their own bed maybe not physically together and that's another thing I want to mention 
there's no distinction between people who are with their twin or not with their twin physically. Some of us are doing it the opposite. Some of us had to prepare certain things so that those people could be with their twins. And some of those twins who are together are, hand, are providing other things for when those other twins come together. So there is an orchestration here. There's not to be any judgment about, well, they, you know, that person's not in their union, and so uh, they don't know what it's like to be physically with their twin. Well, honestly, some people who are physically with their twin don't know the relationship skills or the coping skills to be and live with another person. Some people who are not with their twin may know a lot of the metaphysical aspects of it and have completed large parts of their merge and are expecting to physically be with their twin. And yes, we'll have to go through the steps of creating their brand new partnership and, you know, adjusting to each other because you're all getting reacquainted with each other. As you come together, those little spots that irritate and annoy and blow up really quickly you're adjusting to each other. You're fitting yourselves back together. So while some of you might feel like, well, there's an advantage if you're with your twin, you know, it takes a lot of strength and fortitude. I think at the very least, everyone can agree about that. But um, for those who are still expecting, yes, they will still be living with their twin. And all kinds of twins. There are twins who have passed on and yet will, their essence is still going to be with their person. Not in essence, in a body. There are people who have um, separated or have, let's say, geographic obstacles where they live in different countries. There are gay twins, lesbian twins, transgender twins. And some of those twins, the counterpart is leaving a heterosexual situation because they've healed... Uh, with either the masculine or the feminine, it's time to go. And hanging on is going to be where the letting go of the old becomes difficult. Now, as these things come up between twins, there is an amplification effect because some of the energies that you're in are very subtle and they will um, activate subtle parts of yourself. But your inability to either perceive or recognize and collapse the subtle levels means that things are becoming greatly amplified so that it's identifiable and you can get it to go. And you can uh, relieve it from your union or speak it out, send it out, transmute it, whichever way you do, black hole, or transmute it, or incinerate it. And not by getting angry at your beloved. And yeah, some of you are getting angry at your beloved. So what? Unconditional love does not mean that you don't get angry. Unconditional love means that you're angry for the right things that need to be called to the attention and then gone. So now I want to talk to you about this wave of love because this is the meat here. This is going to be the meat of what I want to talk about to you because this is for some of you to get ready and I hope you can see this let me scoot you in a little bit closer here okay all right as a lot of you know by now I'm not an artist I had to ask my friend for help to draw this and the little the little globe there that I have that just rolled away it's not big enough <laughs> anyways all the people that I've heard of and known were in Australia. Thank you, you wonderful angelic beings, because guess what? Canberra. This is what they this is what I received in my message. And if I'm a little bit off, don't get so upset about it. The main gist is here. The wave is here. The wave's gonna be like flinging open doors, closing other doors, and this is it. This is it. So those Illumin Twin Flames, those Illumin Blu-ray Twin Flames who've been lining up waiting, waiting for timing, um, waiting for situations to alleviate, it's going to be here. And this divine timing supersedes everything. It's going to supersede a piece of paper, a job situation. 
your soul's just going to merge itself back into one because it's time and fire the grid. So here's here we go. Okay, um, Canberra, Sydney. I did also get Perth, which I realize is over on this end here. But pretty much parts of Australia, the northern part especially, Queensland, Wellington, New Zealand. So you've got this segment here. And then you've got um, Samoa, Tahiti, Hawaii. So all the parts of Lemuria, where Lemuria once was. And just so you know, we are talking about almost a million years ago. The position of the continents and the Ice Age hadn't happened and um, rifts in the continent, movements of the tectonic plate, volcanic activity still taking place. So there's parts that were, and I think people can attest to this, parts where you see desert was under seawater at some point. So you have parts, this part actually connected with India. So some of the Lemurians went into India, but the parts that we're concerned with are the parts that um, are going like this. And this pen isn't working good. Um, you are going through Australia, Samoa, Tahiti, all of the islands here. Um, too numerous to mention. I'm not trying to exclude anyone, but pretty much a wave like this extending as far north as Alaska and then parts of western Canada pretty much along this route here. Uh, western Canada, western United States, so Washington, Oregon, California, Utah, New Mexico, Wyoming, and then Arizona, up to part of western Texas, including where I am, Chicago, up into about the Ohio River Valley. And then down, so this is going to wave like this. It's bypassing the eastern United States, which was a part of um, the Ice Age at that time. The Yucatan Peninsula, parts of Bermuda, and now we're into the parts where this was Atlantis. And this is um, the old area where Lemuria was on the globe, or rather above the globe, because we levitated this. Lemuria w had parts that were islands and also parts where the islands were levitated. They they floated. And those were due to the energetics. Um, it was also due to the twin flames and the angelic beings that lived there. Um, they lived a much more etheric type of existence. And so a lot of you have had a lineage or many lifetimes in Lemuria, in Atlantis, and you've been grieving You've been grieving all kinds of stuff. The sadness is welling up from um, the cataclysms, the damage, the invasions, uh, a lot of stuff that happened. That's a lot of the darkness that's been archived. If you choose to look at it up, a lot of it right now is just coming back to people where people are remembering um, their own memories from their own perspective. Many people who were divine counterparts were not actually living a physical existence and they were able to observe what happened and, and came to our rescue. So you, you also have differences in the types of angelics that are here. There's people that came to the rescue of other angelics. There's pe that's why sometimes it's not that intense for them. And there are people that had extreme amounts of damage where they really needed to be rescued and cocooned and um, almost hibernate till certain times. And some of you have memories of this. And some of you uh, did go to another planet for your recuperation and came back here. Because coming back here is concluding your agreement to put your soul together and also your agreement to help Gaia ascend to her uh, position as the new 5D central sun. So as we move through to the parts of Atlantis here, 
and it's encompassing Bermuda, the Caribbean Islands, the Azores, Portugal, Spain, Italy, Sicily, Corsica, Sardinia, France, Germany, Norway, Sweden, Netherlands, England, Ireland, and Scotland. And that's the wave. Now you'll notice I didn't mention um, Switzerland. And that actually was uh, covered with ice. It wasn't populated by people from Atlantis at that time. So there was a, a migration of when everything went down to go this way and into Egypt. And for the Lemurians, they went to India and they went to the western United States and formed the cultures that are uh, became known as the Native Americans. And so um, this is actually also evident in anthropology and actually geology. If you look at some uh, stones or you, they dig up stones from certain time periods and you can actually see delineations where the pressure was on, where there was either intense heat or intense uh, some kind of pressures. And how are we doing some of this ascension? We're being pressurized. No kidding. You're in the pressure cooker. The heat is on. And you um, also physically have had aspects of the uh, temperatures, either the chills or fevers, um, things you're burning off, things that you're integrating. And this is a very physical ascension. So I like to round out the picture for you and tell you why some of this is happening and what's happening. So those people in Australia, you very strong angelics and flinging off that old original anger, because that's what it was described to me as back in late February, early or March. One of my guides said to me, Australia will release the first anger, and I in some ways didn't know what that meant at the moment. But if you think about it, being shoved, shoved off, shunted under, um, disenfranchised, uh, your rights taken away, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and actually um, this is done a full circle here because, yes, there were people that either colonized there or were put in penal colonies. And there's there's some heaviness there. But the people from Atlantis prepared, and Ayers Rock was a sacred point. There are crystals there. But guess what? Here's the difference. You, in your union, as a merged couple in your grid point, you are the new sacred points for the earth. So you are quite literally lifting off, and you're having... Um, you're having sort of this um, effect where there's uh, circles of people in and around your area. And if you're in the center point, if you're in the center point and this is your union and you're one of the first Illumin Twin Flame couples and you actually fling open the door for the other Twin Flame couples and there's this upliftment, there's also source love coming through you, through your physical bodies, out the molecules of your body, the very subatomic God particle level, vibed out to everywhere. And that's how we're doing this, simply by being the love, putting yourself together, merging, lots of hugging and kissing, feeling the passion. And I heard some of you, I have heard some of you, and you're saying, this isn't romantic. Why don't you make it romantic? There's nothing wrong with courting your twin. Be romantic. Get them a card. Get them a flower or something like that. Some of you have. And it's not just on one gender or the other to do that. Be free. Take the limits off. Get yourself out of the box. Because it'll be what you make it. And the other thing to bear in mind is that um, a lot of people hear about divine alchemy. Bear in mind that the very first people that are doing this are the divine counterparts and the blue ray aluminum twin flames and violet uh, aluminum twin flames. The rest of the people are waiting for us to fire the grid and fling open the door. Some of them have been angry that 
you know, not enough people got their act together to do this. But it's been difficult. But I still will say to you, this is the timing. You're in the time now. You're still in the divine time of this. And it's going to happen. This is happening. It's going to happen across the globe. This is what I received. I want to share this with you. I hope that you enjoy um, really becoming reacquainted with your twin. Be new. Be natural. Be willing to overlook things. Don't allow things to digress if you come near together. Um, be each other's friend. And everything should go well for you. And, you know, if you hit some bumpy spots, because even some of the alchemy, the divine alchemy, there's you, some of you are doing this and you've been doing it through sort of a trial and error system. You're putting yourselves together. Be persistent, be gentle, be patient with each other. You're fitting yourselves together again. There's still other parts of you that are going to open. So for this part, you know, like if you have 30 chakras open, guess what? You're going to have 100 open until you're just one big ball of light. That's the direction of this. That's what makes it difficult to map it out. And I'm going to do another video covering some of the new connections which some of you are struggling with. And it's just going to be informational for you to know. I will have another webinar to come out. Um, thank you to everyone who has had a session with me. It's been great. I mean, there's lots of information that comes through the sessions, not just this. And the timelines have been phenomenal. So um, remember that when the doors get flung open and other doors get closed, sometimes it means fasten your seatbelts because some of the people you perceived as being asleep, guess what? They're going to wake up. And some of them may need you. Some of them may need my services. Some of them may need someone else's service. So be open and willing and don't be afraid. Uh, we're all in this together. The message of Twin Flames is make love, not war. So no fighting about who's with their twin, who isn't. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you to have a wonderful week because as we head into October and those next set of eclipses, there's going to be more. So the timelines look really uh, wonderful for love from uh, this equinox to the solstice. And there's a lot more that's going to come because everyone's here for something and everyone's bringing something to the table. Thanks. Bye now.